no need to ask why Just open your mouth and close your eyes It's raining taco Oh, hello I'm Evan, the education program leader for the National Music Center Coming at you today from Studio Bell One thing I've heard a lot of people say over the years is I don't like math In fact, you probably could have heard me saying such things when I was in school Because I didn't like it or at least I didn't like doing it. But rarely have I ever heard anyone say, I don't like music. They might not like this song, but they don't dislike music overall. But then I've also heard people say, music is math. So what do they mean by that? Over the next few videos, I want to look at a couple of ways that math and music come together. So before we get going, we have to define a couple of things. Music, I define as patterns of sound. And math I define as a way to describe patterns using numbers. There are many ways to describe patterns with numbers, from geometry and shapes to the equations of algebra, describing patterns of motions with calculus. But in this series, I want to focus in on one type of math, and that is ratios. Now, when looking at all of mathematics, ratios might seem particularly boring, but they have a lot of applications to music. In this video, we will use ratios to build rhythms. Next time, we're going to use ratios to build harmonies. And then I want to talk about how it's kind of the same thing. You know you're looking at a ratio when you see a number, two dots, and then another number. The colon or the two dots are not the same as an equal sign. These numbers are not equal. Let's say I have a great big bag of beans. Too many beans for me. So I decide to share the beans with my neighbors. In one house, there lives three people. And in the other house, the person lives alone. This means for each bean I give my lonely neighbor, I want to give three beans to the group. Ten more beans over here. I can't just do ten more beans over here. I have to do ten times three, so 30 beans. It could be 100 beans to 300 beans, 300 to 900. The comparison remains the same, even though the numbers change. Ratios can be very helpful when you're trying to think about patterns of rhythm, especially in a very important skill called subdividing. In our Build a Beat video, I talked a lot about pulse, downbeats, and upbeats. And this will apply here too. The pulse is the steady part of the rhythm that you can usually walk to. But let's bring out a tool to measure this. If you took music lessons, you might have thought of this as an object of torture, but it's actually quite useful. It's called a metronome. Or you could think of it as an automatic pulse machine. This one has a pendulum, and it swings back and forth at a steady pace. Further I move this down. So let's find a good walking pace. So I can tap my hand at every tick. Comparing taps to ticks, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. But I could also subdivide and make two taps for every tick. giving us a two to one ratio. I could also do three taps per tick. Now notice I'm still dividing the time evenly. I could do a three to one ratio where it's like, it's still three taps per tick, but it's not evenly divided. Let's do one to four. Now it's hard to just pull this out of nowhere to be able to subdivide like that. So when you're learning how to do this, usually we use words to help us subdivide. To subdivide into two, I fit the word taco into each tick. Taco, 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 taco. We tend to say the word taco very evenly between the two syllables. If I went taco or taco, it sounds very strange to make one side longer than the other. Taco, taco, taco. A good phrase to use for a one to three ratio is taco yum. Taco yum, 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 taco yum. To subdivide into four, you can either do taco twice fast, taco, 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 or you can use taco lettuce. Taco lettuce, taco lettuce, taco lettuce, taco lettuce, taco. Taco, taco, yum, taco, yum, taco, yum, taco, yum, taco, lettuce, taco, lettuce. Now you don't need a metronome to do this exercise. You can be walking down the street at a steady pace. 
subdividing each step either by tapping your legs or saying these words in your head or out loud. So far, we have been doing very simple ratios. We've always had one compared to some number. But let's say we put two on this side and three on the other side. This gets a little bit more complicated and into a topic that scares many trained musicians, polyrhythms. So again, it's much easier to do this using phrases. To do a three to two ratio, I slap together and say, it's taco time, it's taco time. To do a four to three polyrhythm, use the phrase, pass the crispy taco, pass the crispy taco, pass the crispy taco, pass the crispy taco. Without subdivision, rhythm would be just like a ticking clock. It's what we do in comparison to this solid pulse that makes the music and the rhythm interesting. And if you want to become a good musician or just know more about music, I recommend you focus a lot of your time on rhythm. In my opinion, rhythm is the most important skill you can learn as a musician or lover of music. You should also know there's all sorts of non-taco type phrases you can use. There are many charts you can find online where people use words to describe rhythmic patterns. It's one of the best ways to learn this stuff. So you can learn to subdivide. There are many free metronomes online, as well as metronomes you can get for any device. I hope this helps you learn to love the ratios. Next week, we'll use ratios to build harmonies. Until then, happy exploring. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and or subscribe. Also, the National Music Center is a charity that relies on donations. So if you have the means and feel like it, please go to studiobell.ca slash donate.